This week on Please Don't Tease Me, Miss Nagatoro, Season 2. Look at this! How am I supposed to live through this? All you got to do is go that way, really fast. If something gets in your way, turn! I want my two dollars! Oh, okay. Have you any idea what the street value of this mountain is? Man, wasn't that just better than like half of the stuff that we saw during the Super Bowl? Hi there everyone, Lars here with another Nagatoro review, brought to you by Camille's Harem. Not just a podcast for novice writers by novice writers, but also a YouTube channel by novice writers for novice writers. Because writing is an adventure, it's more fun with friends. And we have finally come to one of my favorite parts in the entire saga of Senpai and Nagatoro's misadventures. One of the drawbacks, though, to living in a desert is that you never get to experience a school outing up to the mountains to do some skiing. But to be fair, I probably just sled her toboggan down the slope and ruin all the fine powder for the skiers. Good news for Senpai Nagatoro, I am not on this trip with them. But before that, we get Nagatoro helping Senpai to finally put on some contacts. I love that this episode opens with a very suggestive scene that makes you think that Senpai is having some hard time with rubber. This is followed up with Nagatoro assisting Senpai in the most suggestively misdirecting scene I have seen since Garfield's tussle with Elsa. <clears throat> but the usual teasing shenanigans aside, this moment in both the anime and manga is a pretty big one for Senpai. He's choosing to change. And it's important to note, Nagatoro has not made fun of his poor eyesight at all. In fact, no one has. This isn't something that Senpai has voiced as a problem either. Instead, it is merely a practical solution. Glasses get annoying after a while, but you still need good eyesight. Get some contacts. This moment within the story is meant to show that Senpai can make his own decisions for the better. He doesn't need Nagatoro or her friends, or president for that matter, to egg him on to do something. Sure, it's a small step, but it's an important one because it immediately leads to Senpai taking a much greater leading role in the overall plot, which is what we then see during the skiing trip. Now, I've said it before, but I'm going to say it again. I love the skiing trip arc for Please Don't Tease Me, Miss Nagatoro. And I have two main reasons for that, which I believe have a profound impact on the overall story and show a well-written romance and how it can be such a rewarding and healing experience for the reader or viewer. The first reason is that Senpai finally makes a big choice that leads to him falling for Nagatoro, both literally and figuratively. The second reason is that this arc pulls off the do-over trope which is a big thing that happens in most rom-coms, but usually feels very forced and unrealistic. So, looking at my first reason, while we can easily chalk up Senpai's decision to go out skiing at night because his friends and Nagatoro's friends are nudging him in that direction, it is his persistence in the face of personal embarrassment and failure that is key. What usually matters most in a person's life is what they're doing when others aren't looking. It is a reflection of their inner character. Senpai not only isn't giving up to try to learn how to ski so he won't hold Nagatoro back, but he also risks himself and uses what little skill he has to save a kid. So Senpai, by all means, is a certifiable Chad. And while Senpai is not rewarded with competence and amazing skills for all of his hard work, he is rewarded with a second chance with Nagatoro on the trip, a one-on-one -on -one ski date at night. Now, we can quibble how realistic it is that Nagatoro finds him on one slope just in time to rescue him from some 
doofuses while she was presumably snowboarding on another slope. But I think that the story has done enough to show that Nagatoro's senpai sensors usually lead her to him at the right moment. The thing is, and this is my big second reason for loving this particular arc, is that Senpai has a chance for a do-over with her, and finally take her up on Nagatoro's offer for more skiing lessons so he can spend some time with her. The do-over trope is a staple of romantic comedy, because comedy at its root is about overcoming tragedy. For comedy to work, there has to be a problem to overcome, a tragedy that has weighed down the protagonist. In most romantic comedies, the protagonist finds love, but because of the core problem or tragedy at the heart of their lives, they will lose that love, so they need a do-over to help them get back the love that they just lost within the story. It's a simple formula, but there are tons of applications for it. However, you'll find that most of these do-over tropes are implemented very lazily or forced. This episode's amazing strength in the do-over trope is its setup and simplicity. Senpai has already demonstrated a willingness to change. We see him now fantasize more about positive experiences with Nagatoro, which is a real big shift from season one. He even has a chance for a day skiing date with her. However, his own insecurities, which have been a problem since episode one, come back to haunt him, and he thinks that now he's just dragging Nagatoro down and preventing her from fully enjoying a trip where she's clearly in her element. So, so he turns down her offer for night lessons. However, Senpai goes back outside and for himself tries to become better. It is a decision made out of his interest in Nagatoro, but also out of a growing desire to become better himself, which is why I qualify this as a very healthy move towards greater romance. When Nagatoro rescues him, he finally has the courage to ask her for a redo on those lessons that she had previously offered. And in the dim light, Nagatoro gets what she wants, alone time with her senpai where she commands his absolute attention. And senpai has a realization. There are feelings there, very legitimate romantic feelings. Most fans of anime and manga already know that the bubbles in a scene convey strong feelings, usually romantic ones, and someone has definitely turned on the bubble machine because they are all over the place in this scene. While Senpai hasn't yet admitted to himself that he loves Nagatoro, the feelings are clearly there. And I've reread the manga a few times over, and each time it feels like everything changes with the ski trip. From here on out, Senpai's confidence grows and his feelings come out more and more. It's no longer just Nagatoro teasing him that pushes the relationship forward, but Senpai takes an active role growing and deepening it. And maybe that's another reason why I enjoy this particular use of the do-over trope so much. It's done not at the end like most rom-coms, but rather it happens kind of in the middle of the story. Rather than being the solution to the whole or deal, it is a turning point leading to many more great times ahead. Way more romantic and amazing moments, but this one right here is really special because it is such a massive turning point. And really, we are now entering one of the manga's longest arcs. Themes, moments, and small conversations are all about to converge on the judo mat and lead to some sweet romantic goodness. And honestly, the upcoming arc would not be nearly as rewarding, in my opinion, without the events of this particular episode and arc. Now, that will do it for this review and analysis. Hopefully for any of you novice authors out there, this small dive into the do-over trope and romantic breakdown have been helpful to you. And if you're looking for more writing advice, we have it all across our channel and podcast. We have writing exercises for you that you can check out over at our Pinterest page, and we would love for you to join our ever-growing community of novice authors, if you haven't already done so. Links for our books, other resources, and more are in the description below. Thank you for joining us on this fun adventure that we call writing, and until the next video, y'all, tschüss.